Okay, so we're at the moment of truth here. Um, we have pretty much everything we need. We have our key, we have our Euphoria package, we have our target, we have Unity, we have our 3D model. So we're going to open up Unity and we're going to create a new project here. Uh, we're going to give it a name, so I'm going to call it um, Bees, because I really like Bees. They freak me out a little bit, but that's okay. And I'm going to change that to where uh, the project name and the folders match. So I'm going to create the project and just give it a second. So what we actually have now is Unity open and I'll leave it again up to you guys to kind of navigate Unity. There's quite a few um, uh, YouTube tutorials out there on how to handle that. So what we're going to do one by one is we're going to drag in our um, components. So first things first up on top is going to be our sofa. Let's drop it right into there and to this open area. You can either drop it into this assets area or into this big open area here. And as you can see, it made two folders. One is for materials, one is for the textures that we wanted to carry over. So if we take this sofa and drop it in, it's gonna be kind of hard to see. It looks like it dropped it in at zero, zero. So if we want to, I can't find it really. Oh, there it is. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on it and see where that goes. That's kind of in a weird spot. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zero it back out uh, just to be safe, which isn't the case. Uh, I'm going to move it closer to zero. Uh, that's one of the downsides. What we probably should have did in 3D Studio Max is have zeroed out um, the location, especially if we're going to drop these in one by one. But for right now, this would be the best way to do that is by making sure we're on center and we can kind of rotate and notice that this thing is up. So what I'm going to do is right now this is set to a perspective view. That's what those really weird rays mean. And I'm going to change this to an orthographic view, kind of like a map version. And so I'm just going to raise it up a little bit and leave it like that. Actually, I'm probably going to, uh, right there is probably good. And then I'm going to check the top, fine. And we're probably going to have to move it again later after we add some more stuff, but for right now, it's in a spot to where we can use. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take our Vuforia package and again, just like we did before, left click, drag, and into this big area for assets. That's going to decompress, and then you're going to get this whole thing here. This is just everything in there that this, that's needed to get the augmented reality working. So I'm going to click on import. I have no idea what any of that is, so please don't ask. So we let it import, and that's it. So now we're going to sit down and take our target that we added and do the exact same thing. Just drop it into this big assets folder and then we're just going to hit import. Not too much should happen there, but that's that's pretty much it. The next thing that we want to do is we want to actually get Vuforia set up. So to do that, we actually need to go into the Vuforia folder and go into prefabs. And we want to take this AR camera and drag that into the hierarchy panel. So I'm going to left click drag and let go. Now we have two cameras. We don't really need that, so we're going to delete the main camera. Once that's deleted, we can go ahead and pretty much leave this as it is for right now, but we want to go ahead and add our image target. That really weird polygonal purple green thing, we're going to add that. As you see here, it didn't do too much. Uh, I'm zooming out by using my middle mouse rolly button, scrolly button, I'm not sure. So right now it is blank, and what we want to do is make sure that we're still on the image target. You can tell that by the blue bar. And if we come over to the inspector and look at image target behavior and click on data set, you're going to see where we actually have our augmented reality thing, just like we got from the unit or the Vuforia store. So I'm going to come back here and bring that back just to kind of make show you what the difference is. So develop, developerviewforia.com and then I'm going to come back over to the develop and then we're going to do design test or I'm sorry, go back, interior design or I'm sorry, we don't have, even have to do that. Let's go to target manager and you can see here AR int design and so that's how these correlate. When you click this download button here, you have the Unity editor and whatever you download from here, that's actually what's being used right here. So if I click on this use AR in design, you see it automatically throws up that crazy purple thing that we were using. That's it for image target. Now we're going to move on to AR camera. 
Um, this is where our app license comes into play. If you, after you're selecting your camera, move over here to Inspector, and then under Vuforia Behavior Script, find the app license key area. If you remember right, we saved our app key to a notepad file, and as soon as I open that, I can copy it and paste it right in. We pretty much leave everything else the same. The next thing that we want to mess with is this thing called database load behavior. So with that, we want to go ahead and load data set AR interior, as I, I think that means interior design, and click on that. This activate button pops up here. Go ahead and click on that. From there, we're pretty much done. The only real problem that I now see is that the sofa is way too small to be used. So what we're going to do is we're going to scale up a little bit. And to scale that is this little icon here or the R key on the keyboard. Once I scale that up, we can see now that this is a lot more visible and we can do quite a bit with it. Uh, it looks like the feet are trapped underneath. So I'm going to use the move tool and raise that up just a tad. So just a little bit off the ground. And so there you have it. Uh, we are pretty much set to go. Once, make sure one more time that everything's checked the way it should be. We have our license key. We have our database behavior set up properly to where it loads it in and it's set up. And you can tell instantly that our tag, that our tag is working because we can see the image tag here. So what I'm going to do now is hit play. You have to give it a second because sometimes it takes a minute. And as you can see, my camera is kind of in a weird position. If I were to take this camera and to move it right over there, and actually we had, we have a mistake because we can see our couch right here for some weird reason. I'm going to turn that off and then I'm going to take the sofa and drag that into the image target and let go. So as you can see now, it's now inset or a child of the image target. So I'm gonna give that one more shot come back over here, look at our target, and now, as soon as we hover over it, we can see the actual target that we want to use. So if I move my mouse out of the way, uh, we can lift, rotate, down, up, zoom in, zoom out. We can actually do anything that we want with this little chair here. And uh, some of the steps were a little bit long, but that's mostly because we want to be able to start instilling some professional practices in here to make sure that these processes work right no matter when and where you use them. And that's pretty much it. There's gonna be a couple more tips and tricks, but other than that, um, out of the five videos that we have, that's gonna cover almost everything you need. If you have any questions, talk to your instructor. Um, if they uh, can't answer it, contact us over at the Center for eLearning and we'll see what we can do for you. All right, thank you.